here soon. Cool. Brandon. Cool. Hi, everybody. So this is the story of a tiny potato. I already ate. I just gave all of the judges <laughs> tiny potatoes. It is the tiny potato one. that, in fact, changed everything. And yes, I have tiny potatoes for a small subset of you, if you'd like them later. You've all seen this meme, right? I am a tiny potato, and I believe in you. You can do the thing. Of course you have. It's been all over the internet for years, right? I it ate comes it. from a webcomic called Emily's Diary. The point is that even the smallest of actions can have a positive effect. The tiny potato believes in your ability to do the thing, even though the thing is large. Because to a tiny potato, everything is large. So now that I've given a brief history of potatoes on the internet, let me explain the recent history of politics in the United States. We recently had an election. I heard it went well. So many people got exactly what they want that Canada's one moose-powered server fell over when everyone in the United States simultaneously asked, yeah, so I'd like to winter in Manitoba and never come back. But people have always done this, right? Every election year in the United States, it's the same thing. If the right person doesn't get elected, I'm going to Canada. Weirdly bipartisan, despite the fact that Canada is not weirdly bipartisan by American standards. But it turns out that if you're in this room, you did not move to Canada. Note, if you're watching this video later and you did move to Canada, that's fine. You can just go away. I gather everything is great in Canada and you have like a backstreet boy as prime minister or something. It's very confusing. <laughs> But for the rest of us left in the United States, we're unhappy. And actually, I mean all of us are unhappy, not just people who voted for any particular political candidate. This is cross-partisan. Across the political spectrum, people hate where we're going. From a poll taken over the new year, so it was December 30th through January 4th, 56% of Democrats, 67% of Independents, and 61% of Republicans think that the country is on the wrong track. So people in this community, in this very room, coming from both the left and the right, think that for whatever reason, we're in deep trouble. I propose that we fix stuff. We know that we can do it because the tiny potato believes in us. But wait, isn't someone already doing the thing? Isn't that why we gave all this money to the EFF every single year, right? Isn't that what they're for? Are they in, aren't they in charge of fixing the world on behalf of hackers? How come the EFF hasn't just solved everything? So it's true, like the security community does have a few pet causes we like to champion. The Electronic Frontier Foundation is one and they handle a bunch of excellent tech policy things. For some people, HFC is another group. We also have industry groups like I Am The Cavalry who provides resources to policymakers who cannot computer but nonetheless want to make laws about all the computers. They're fine, those are great groups. They are nerd armies doing nerd work on behalf of nerd organizations for nerd causes. That's great. But those are niche solutions. And remember how Mark Andreessen annoyingly said, software ate the world, so I have all the money now, ha ha ha. That means that the whole world is now our problem, and in several cases, it's actually our fault. Because we're the ones in this community who told unsophisticated users what the rest of the world would call normal people, that security was impossible unless they did everything they said, and since they couldn't do everything we said, they were doomed, and they sucked, and everything was their fault, and they should kill themselves. And their reaction to that was not what we expected, right? They didn't just give up. They decided they'd meddle through, even as their world has gotten increasingly hostile. And this is the whole rest of the world. So we need to reach out to the rest of the world with our time, not just our money which is something that this community has traditionally done very poorly, with a few major counterexamples, to be clear. For instance, Jesse Irwin has spent the last several years reaching out to educators, which is hard because they aren't computer hacksaws. And some of the lawyers in this room and in this community have spent a lot of time working with lawyers who are also not computer people and do not like computer people because it takes away from billable hours. There are also other people doing this kind of individual outreach, and that's fabulous, but there aren't nearly enough of them. We need an army of small potatoes focused not on one task, even an important one like the EFF, but on fixing the whole world. And we spent years pretending we don't actually live in this world even as we changed it permanently. And so the world needs changing again. We can change it in tiny ways for the better because the tiny potatoes believe in us. So I'm proposing several big areas in which we, hackers, technologists, all the people who basically stare at fields of blinking lights and then get very angry when the plates don't blink in the right way, can have an impact on the world. And specifically, these are all areas in which we can have an impact on non-hacker things that affect the world as a whole, not other kind of technology issues, even though those are also important. And if you disagree with my areas, you are more than welcome to come up with your own. If you believe that the world and the country need help, then you should pitch in to help it in whatever way and in whatever direction you think is most valuable, even if you disagree with what direction that is with me. The idea is if we all pitch in, we'll form a world that's more aligned with what we wanted it to be. 
and then we get to have like a democratic society deciding what a world would like to be as opposed to whatever the heck it is we have now. So for each of these four major areas, there are huge name brand organizations in this space, which I'm mostly going to ignore. Then there are smaller organizations. And I'm gonna suggest you look at the smaller organizations because huge NGOs have things like basic IT help and tiny non-governmental organizations do not. And a lot of the people who wanna make a difference where you personally live and work are small organizations that don't know how to email very well, let alone anything else. And so each of these are just a few ideas of a few small organizations. I've done a little bit of looking into them. I have things like Charity Navigator scores up. But you should look around your own community where you live for more. And thank you, by the way, to Grant Doby and Winnie Knox Everett, who helped me identify many of the organizations on this list. So first big issue, climate. You might have heard about it. It's not a secret that the climate is changing. If you think it is a secret that the climate is changing, I've heard there's a bunch of very cheap beachfront land in South Florida going very good for you. So setting aside organizations that are primarily created for reality TV shows or boat hijackings, which is weird, um, we have the Sierra Club, which does not do that. And they're a good organization that works nationally, and they have perfectly fine IT stuff. Their small subchapters get no IT help from the national organization. So if you look at the small chapters, they're like, does anyone know how to add something to our Drupal installation? Like basic stuff. They use Yahoo Groups. They do chapter email on AOL, that kind of thing. They need help with basic IT things. This is going to be a running theme. And I'll talk more about specifically what I think we should be doing later. Other small groups working in the climate are things like Massachusetts Audubon Society or things that are land trusts that are buying up chunks of land like Colorado Open Lands. Or if you live on a coast and you have an inlet and the inlet has an animal in it and the animal is cute, there is probably a group trying to save that animal in that inlet on that coast because this is how groups work. So go find an inlet that you think has a cute animal in it. Look for them. They don't have a good web page because you can't find it on Google because they suck at SEO and help them do their thing, whatever their thing is. Third big issue, second big issue, homelessness and refugees. These are two large issues that span the whole world and they have a myriad of causes, ranging from war is bad to mental illness sucks to for some reason every job requires me to move to San Francisco. And so th that said, while these are world spanning issues, they are intensely local because it turns out that refugees aren't just places, they're in very specific places and the same thing with the homeless crises. So a major organization that's doing work locally, intensely locally, as opposed to the United Nations, which is trying to do things like end war, which is also good, but let's consider that a stretch goal, um, <laughs> is the International Rescue Committee. They have a ton of individual offices around the United States and around the world dedicated to helping people resettle in those communities, as well as offices in conflict zones dedicated to getting people out. And all the lights are fading down, which is a little disconcerting. Okay, yeah, thank you, yes, there you go. I'm watching my time, I'm not out of time yet. There are also smaller organizations like Refugee Services of Texas doing this work. On the non-refugee homelessness side, things like the, Center, the Committee for Creative Nonviolence, which has sued the United States government like 14 times for hilarious reasons, um, need a lot of assistance, as well as shelters and service organizations all around the country. And they need basic things like setting up a shared web terminal, which sounds meaningless. Who cares if these people can check cat videos Except that then you realize that most entry-level jobs no longer have paper applications. If you want to be a grocery store cashier, you have to apply online. So being able to set up a shared web kiosk of the type that everyone in this room has told everyone in their family never to use ever is literally a difference between these people can never, ever even apply for a job and these people can get off the street. So it's a major deal. Third big issue, healthcare. Not a radical concept, people would like not to die. The Affordable Care Act, you might have heard of it, expanded this radical not dying concept to a larger group. And the votes on Wednesday and this afternoon have now shrunk this radical not dying group. So we're gonna need more of this. But even, without, even with or without the Affordable Care Act, we still have a lot of people who are not covered, who are not getting basic healthcare needs met. Things like, hmm, I've had this weird scab that isn't really healing in my leg for like six months, and it smells kind of funny. I wonder if I'm gonna be able to continue to work. Well, I guess I'll just die of gangrene. And so there are service organizations that set up clinics and free, free clinics and free event clinics, which help thousands of people in a few days, that are helping people like that with like, here is some antibiotic cream, now you can live. Simple, basic interventions. The big group in this area is Doctors Without Borders and Medicines on Frontier. They work around the world increasingly into their published horror. They're working in the United States for reasons. But there are also small free clinics around the country and they're everywhere, right? 
the Greenfield, South Carolina Free Medical Clinic, the Free Clinic of Southwest Washington, the Free Medical Clinic of Knoxville, Tennessee, which I've heard is a big deal, um, the Seattle King County Clinic, the list goes on. I promise you they have one of these in your area, but they need simple things like HIPAA help, because yes, even if you're not charging money for services, you can still be fined millions of dollars for HIPAA. And so it's basic stuff, right? Like how do I save patient notes in something free that's better than Google Docs, right? Not, we're not talking like massive compliance assessments here. Fourth, minority rights. If you believe John Scalzi's basic premise that straight white male is the lowest difficulty setting, then all of these organizations try to help people at a slightly higher difficulty setting than that. Whether that's women or people of color, people with disabilities or anything else. And now I'm gonna list a ton of individual groups and I'm not conflating these groups. These are all different kinds of things. So I'm not trying to say that one is equal or I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm just giving you an idea of the breadth of these organizations. And if you have a, a group of people that you think need help, there's probably already an organization trying to help that group of people with particular eyes challenges in your community. So go find them. And that ranges from everything like the NAACP to the Southern Poverty Law Center, to the Anti-Defamation League, to NAMI, to the Transgender Law Center, to Lambda Legal. And while many of these are big national organizations, a lot of those have small focus chapters in your town that you can go help. So, we're a community of security people. Thoughts of tiny potatoes motivate our path forward. What do these organizations need? Do they need hardcore red teaming? Do they need people walking in as a UPS guy so they can steal laptops? Can we at any put, point put on our balaclavas? No, we should definitely not do that. This is a typical nonprofit working to change the world. Outdated, often drastically, software. Worse, they probably can't upgrade it because a key piece of hardware they need to like feed children or something only runs on Windows 1998. These organizations do not have technology as a primary focus, and what they need is help accomplishing their mission, but it turns out that nobody of any organization, for profit or not, can do anything these days without basic IT infrastructure, because data is all digital now, and so you can't get along without this. So the people in this room, yes, you could spend your time like literally like working at a soup kitchen or you know, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, the traditional biggies, right? But it turns out that if you take your unique talents, which is mostly IT and tech support type stuff, not just red teaming, just basic stuff like plugging in printers and use that to support the mission of the organization, you'll be doing work that they will find uniquely valuable. So two big ideas as you're gonna do that work. The first is the idea of incremental change. It's very common in this industry to say, well, either you do everything my way or you're worthless and you should kill yourself. But that's not how making the world better works, right? And it turns out if you talk to these organizations, a lot of them have been doing this work for decades. And it's not a sprint, they're very common of saying. Like, it's not even like a good decade, right? Some decades we just don't do very well. But they keep going and they make slow incremental changes and things suck slightly less, which would be nice. We could also make small incremental changes. This would be a good cultural cue to take from these organizations back to security. The second one is one of harm minimization. And think like Violet Blue would be besides Las Vegas, right? If they have to do the bad thing, like put the Windows 98 box on the internet because the child feeder 9000 requires an internet connection, and that's the way it works, and I wish I was exaggerating, and I could tell you horror stories. Constrain how bad it is. Maybe that means a separate internet connection, maybe that means a VLAN, maybe that means something else. Think of terms of, again, like harm minimization. The bad thing is going to happen. How do I minimize the secondary badnesses that happen? Beyond these, we had a shout out to decentsecurity.org earlier. Again, decentsecurity.org, run by the amazing Taylor Swift, oddly, um, has a lot of great steps on this. Space Rogue would like me to hurry. I will hurry quickly. <laughs> I can go minutes, faster. Buddy. I have the ability to do it. <laughs> Um, and so again, your job is to fix what you have to fix in the time you have to give, whether that's updating their website, or changing their backup plan from Bob to something like Backblaze, it's an amazing concept, or just blowing out the dust out of their computers. So what's the end goal? For one thing, beyond simply sending money to the EFF every year and then complaining why we have okay tech policy but everything else is on fire, we might be able to contribute to the world we say we want. But a second goal is that our community has a slight image problem because non-security people have this impression that the security people just party in Vegas and only hire people who look like us. And I don't know why they're getting that, but it might be cool if we showed them we could do more than just go to Vegas every summer. Finally, we need to do this because we're the only ones who are capable of fixing things, but not, and, and, we can't fix everything by ourselves, but we can help other people who want to fix things. And we can do that regardless of whether politicians say shitty things about our weight in national debates. 
We, the nerds, are the ones who do it. We must be the geek we wish to see in the world. Or as Cory Doctorow put it with Charlie Strauss, there's always someone who unaccountably carries the let's lick the frozen fence post gene. There's always a fucking geek who will do it because it is a historical, goddamn, technical fucking imperative that we change the world into our own image. I hope you'll help me lick the fence post. Thank you. Thank you.